Since 2021, the Tesla Model S Plaid has held the title of quickest accelerating production car that we've ever tested. And it has been without a real challenger. Until now. The Lucid Sapphire. Based on the Air, which already claims better range and a more luxurious interior than the Model S, Sapphire brings the addition of a third motor and a few hundred extra horses. What you're looking at are two of the quickest vehicles on the planet. You've probably seen videos of Lucid and Teslas drag racing against one another before, but I can guarantee you haven't seen this. We ran this race a few times, but the result was always the same. The Sapphire had won it by the quarter mile, and by the time they got to the half, it was out in front all on its own. However, that doesn't quite tell the whole story. In the summer of 2023, Tesla rolled out the Track Pack upgrade. The Track Pack brings larger forged aluminium wheels along with upgraded tyres, calipers, and carbon ceramic brakes. With those in place, Tesla engineers will patch the software in your plaid and finally allow you to hit the car's top speed, 200 miles per hour. We had asked Tesla to loan us a 2024 track pack plaid, but as Tesla famously doesn't have a PR department, that request went nowhere. We had to settle for a standard non-track pack plaid, and so our plaid was limited to 163 miles per hour. Now, of course, that is an incredible speed in and of itself, and the Tesla Model S hit that speed just after we crossed the quarter mile. So if we were just doing a quarter mile drag race, we would never have hit that limiter. But we went for the half mile. Not that it made much of a difference, as the acceleration figures between the standard and track pack plaid are, according to Tesla, identical. And as we saw, the Sapphire had comprehensively beat it through the quarter mile. There's something ferocious about the way the Tesla puts down its power. Even with the car set to drag race mode and in its full cheetah stance, where the car's front end lowers down to load the front axle with weight to help put power down during the launch, the car's acceleration is so rapid that the front end lifts and the steering feels super light as you pull away. I've never experienced anything quite like it. So we've established that the Model S Plaid is a remarkably quick vehicle, of course. That goes without saying. How does it drive? How does it actually genuinely perform on the highways, back roads? That's what we're gonna find out. Over the course of our three days with the Sapphire and the Plaid, we did far more than just drag racing. From extensive limit testing and range testing to driving the cars on all manner of roads and in different conditions, we wanted to deep dive into comparing these two vehicles. But first, I wanna talk about the Lucid Sapphire. The Sapphire sits above the GT Performance as the top trim level of Lucid's first vehicle, the Air. The GTP already had 1,050 horsepower. That one only had two motors. Here in the Sapphire, much the same as in the Model S Plaid, we have three motors, one up front and two on the rear. And we've got a few extra horsepower as well. In fact, this Lucid Sapphire has 1,234 horsepower and 1,430 pound-feet of torque. All of which means that I can do, predictable, this. Ugh, that's 100. That's 130. That's 150. That's 170. Okay, oh, I yeah. am. Wow, wow, wow. Okay, so same story in the Sapphire as in the Plaid. It's ridiculous quick. But the way it delivers the power I can already feel is different. Even though the GT Performance produced more horsepower than the Plaid, it only had two motors. 
During launches, when the car's front end would lift, it would lose traction and, with it, the ability to put power down at the front axles. But with the addition of a third motor, the Sapphire now has the capacity to get the car launched without compromising on power. And you've just seen it absolutely decimate that Model S plaid on the quarter and the half mile. But that doesn't tell the whole story. So let's head out onto the roads now, where we can discuss the car's similarities, their many differences, and discuss why this might not be quite such a straightforward comparison test as first meets the eye. So we know that this car can do spectacular things in a straight line, but how is it dynamically? Well, I'm afraid to say it's a little bit of a nightmare. As you can see, any corner that I'm faced with, I'm slightly apprehensive. I don't quite know how much steering to give it, how much brakes to give it, how much I should be on or off the gas. It's all just a little bit messy. And I think the culprit is really the yoke. That is the sort of start of all of my problems with this car. I find the steering to be super unbalanced. It's really, really sharp. The moment you get off center, the car is moving quite aggressively in both directions. And that's not what you want when you've got over a thousand horsepower at your disposal. The suspension, well, I don't even know what to say. It's sort of all at once springy and hard, but kind of mushy. It just doesn't really, again, inspire any confidence. The brakes, a little bit wooden. There's no feedback in the pedal, and, and, and that is just, I mean, not great. <laughs> I mean, don't know what else to say. It is not really a driver's car, this. Is it a drag race car? Yeah, yeah, we've shown that it is pretty spectacular in a straight line. But other than that, I just find it a little bit all over the place. You do get more road feedback from the Tesla than you do in the Sapphire. And, um, you know, that's great. But there is a downside to that too, and that is that this car tramlines spectacularly. If there are any real imperfections in the road, especially if you're in a corner, you do feel that the car all of a sudden lurches into those voids and little cracks, and, and all of a sudden you're going in a direction that you didn't put the car in. Now that again is very disconcerting. Tesla's superpower is their ability to innovate. However, the risk they run in trying to be the first to market with these innovations is putting out a product that is half-baked. That's how we feel about the yoke. Without a steer-by-wire system to help modulate it depending on the application, the yoke makes the car hard to maneuver at low speeds and unsettles it when you're going quick. The Cybertruck, which has just been released, has steer-by-wire. It also has a revised yoke design which looks a lot more like a steering wheel. In their excitement to get the yoke to market in the Plaid, did Tesla sacrifice the car's dynamic road handling? It's also worth noting that Tesla quietly began offering the plant with a more conventional steering wheel as standard after some customer feedback. The yoke is now a $1,000 option. It strikes me that the plant is an update away from being a much, much better car. We recently saw that with the Model 3 Highland, which received a nose to tail refresh including suspension re-engineering, as well as an interior refresh, including added sound deadening something the Model S could sorely use. We've established that the Plaid is spectacular in a straight line and not so great going around corners, but of course, up until recently, there's not been anything to directly compare it to. Now we have the Lucid Sapphire, so let's jump in that on the same road, same conditions, and see how the two compare. We're back in the Sapphire, and can you hear that? Silence, well, relative silence, and that is because the interior of this car acoustically is so much more settled and sorted and silent than the Model S Plaid. Something I hadn't really noticed until I got out of that car and into this one. All of the road noise that was coming up, I could hear and feel the vibration through the tires. I could hear the rocks coming up off those sticky tires and hitting the underside of the wheel wells. Whereas here in the Lucid, comparatively, it's serene. It's calm, it's peaceful, it's luxurious. And that, I think, is a big, big point, which is to say that the Model S has always been touted as a luxury EV. Well, I'm afraid to say this Lucid, and specifically the Sapphire I'm in now, has kind of thrown that into perspective. It really has redefined what a luxury EV super sedan is. There's a big caveat, of course, in that this car costs over twice the price 
of the Model S Plaid. But interior aside, let's talk driving impressions. That's what we care about after all. And I'm afraid to say, Tesla fans, it's a clean sweep for the Sapphire. The steering is impeccable. The brake, confidence inspiring, the way that the power, the torque and the horsepower are fed in as you hit the pedal, it's spectacular, it really is. You can tell that Lucid had this car ready to go and then said, you know what, we're gonna keep developing it, we're gonna keep dialing it in. That's, that accounts for that year between when we drove the engineering car and now they really use that time well to dial this car in, which I think is a responsible move given that this car has over 1,200 horsepower and 1,400 pound-feet of torque. Dare I say it's one of the best driving cars I've ever had the pleasure of driving. It really is settled and I never once feel like the car is taking me somewhere I don't want to go. The feedback from both the brake and the accelerator pedal is really nicely dialed in. The steering is beautifully weighted. Whether you've got it in comfort or sport mode, it's still really responsive. It's great. The Plaid is sort of like the Dodge Challenger Hellcat of the EV world. It's a decade-old platform that's been given as much power as possible, with not a lot of thought going into anything else. But hey, for the price, it's got one hell of a party trick. The Lucid Air is proof that Tesla is no longer the leader in EV technology. The Sapphire drives farther, charges faster, and accelerates quicker than the Plaid. You get a sense that with the Plaid, Tesla set out with the aim of making a vehicle that could do a 0 to 60 in less than two seconds. Whereas Lucid is selling a car that's designed to deliver incredible performance in handling, braking, and acceleration without compromising daily civility. The elephant in the room is, of course, that this Lucid Sapphire is over twice the price of a Model S Plaid, which makes this comparison really tricky. We are quite sure that this is a better vehicle, but is it twice as good? Well, maybe, but at that MSRP, the Tesla is very impressive. It's just compromised. And when we're talking about vehicles that can do in excess of 200 miles an hour, I'm not sure I want to be driving a compromised one. It's like that old saying, if you want to go quick, buy a Tesla. But if you want to go far, but also very, very quick, buy a Lucid. <laughs>